Welcome to the uh, Leadership in the Nation's Interest Award Dinner tonight. Uh, I'm Steve Odlin from the Committee for Economic Development, and I'm very pleased to see everyone here tonight for what will be a great evening honoring Ambassador Barbara Barrett. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, which are featured on the screens and in the program, and uh, who, Barbara, have all written you uh, nice messages in, in the program, so please do take that back. But uh, our sponsors, of course, are Triple Creek Ranch, uh, Henrietta Four, uh, the Rand Corporation, TIAA, Insignium, Caltech, Tenneco, Harmon, Pace Communications, Kelly Services, Independent Women's Forum, Arizona State University. You might rec uh, re recognize a few of these, Barbara. Corn Ferry, the Aerospace Corporation, Anne McLaughlin, Carl Logos, Host Hotels and Resorts, Colgate Palmolive, Airbus, Broadview, Thunderbird School and of Global Management, and finally, the National Aeronautic Association. A lot of sponsors, but uh, a lot of people are very dedicated to Barbara. Business statesmanship is at the forefront of CED's work purpose and is the hallmark of tonight's Leadership in the Nation's Interest Award. If I could have everyone's attention, please, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to present the award before dinner here, and then we'll allow everyone to eat, and then what we'll do after that is, is we'll have a, a little fireside chat, as I call it, uh, with Barbara. But, but I would like to, uh, to proceed into the, the award. You know, business statesmanship has been at the forefront of CED for our 75-year history, and it differentiates, I think, business leaders who are out for their own companies and their own good versus business leaders who are out for the nation's interest. And CED has always been about reason solutions from business in the nation's interest. And so it was at the heart of our founding, and so this award and the recognition of Barbara Barrett is so important because it goes right to the core uh, of our founding. Here to introduce Ambassador Barrett and speak more about why she is so deserving of the award is the Honorable Anne McLaughlin Coralogos. Now, now Barbara Barrett is a superstar, and we're going to learn about that tonight, but, but Anne is also a superstar in her own right. Anne served as the United States 19th Secretary of Labor, and as the top labor official in government, she focused on public and private sector attention on the needs of the rapidly changing workforce. But, Bar uh, but, but Anne also chaired the Aviation Security and Air Terrorism Commission, which investigated the Pan Am 103 bombing, which uh, is an aerospace tie here. But this was the model, this was the commission that was the model for the 9-11 commission and, and Anne was the expert that, was, uh, that led this commission and then uh, provided the guidance for the 9-11 for the commission. She also had a very distinguished career in the private sector. She's the former chairman of the RAND Corporation, former senior advisor to the investment banking firm of Benedetto Gartland and Company. She serves as a member of the board of host hotels and resorts and Michael Kors and um, you can all approach her for samples afterwards from Michael Kors. I'm sure she can arrange that. Um, and if not, I'm dead. Uh, Anne is very much involved in the arts. Uh, she has uh, her internationally renowned uh, Anne Coralogos Gallery, specializes in Western art and artists. Again, a superstar. Anne, welcome. Please join me in, in welcoming Anne. no introduction. I'm glad to be here. Um, good evening, and thank you, Steve. Happy anniversary. You don't look old enough to be in your 75th anniversary. <laughs> I, uh, I am delighted to be with you all, and I, I thank you for that introduction. I was trying to find a connection to Barbara, and the Air Terrorism Commission did it, so you'll see why in a minute. Um, but we're, we're delighted, and I am particularly delighted, I know all of you are, um, to be here with Barbara, our honoree, uh, and a friend of mine. She just reminded me that it was 1987 when she introduced me. I was Secretary of Labor at something she was attending for trade, and et cetera. And apparently, my office gave her my bio, and she used that for the introduction, including my birth date. <laughs> 
And I admonished her and said, you know, you don't have to read everything that they give you. I won't do that to you, I promise. The Leadership in the Nation's Interest Award recognizes a corporate leader who leads with integrity and purpose and champions public policies for the common good. In describing why she was selected for this honor, CED has called her a true business champion. They have lauded her efforts to encourage other executives to move our country forward, restore trust in business, and provide a reasoned voice for practical public policy decisions, all very timely. Let me tell you a little more about Barbara and why I believe she epitomizes this award. Throughout her career, it is fair to say, Barbara has soared. In her case, soaring is not just a metaphor for her career trajectory. It is a literal description of some of her amazing accomplishments. This is a woman, woman who has helped guide an F-A-18 Hornet to land on an aircraft carrier. When challenged by a Finnish officer some few years ago, she held her own, piloting the same type of plane in a dogfight over northern Finland. And she trained as an astronaut with the space tourism company Space Adventures, so she could serve as a backup in case the astronaut scheduled to lead the flight was unable to make the trip. That's gutsy. Now note, it takes about 20 years for most aspiring astronauts to develop the rocket science aptitude to be certified for space flight. Barbara did it in four and a half months. Barbara, I'm sort of glad that the astronaut came and you didn't go, but nothing personal here. <laughs> With an MBA, a law degree, and a pilot's license under her belt, she developed her business acumen as a top executive at two Fortune 500 corporations before she was 30. From there, she earned appointments to the Civil Aeronautics Board and the Federal Aviation Administration. And she served our nation ably as ambassador to Finland in 2008, 2009. Barbara has served on 50 nonprofit boards, including those of the Hershey Trust and Mayo Clinic. Barbara is now chairman of the board of the Aerospace Corporation. Many of you know of that, a federally funded research and development center for national security and military space systems. So it comes as no surprise that Barbara sees the economy through an aviation lens. As she has put it, and I quote, the economy flies on the wings of aircraft. Barbara and I worked together at the uh, board of the RAND Corporation, and uh, we discovered during this time of being on that board, a little more time to chat, that we had mutual interests. Lest you think I'm referring to a shared passion for piloting advanced aircraft in dangerous situations, I want you to know right away that's not what we have in common. We both love America, the American West and the art and artists that depict it in all its glory. Barbara and her husband have more than 400 such works in their collection, and my art gallery in Basalt, Colorado specializes in Western art. We also both love horses. We love to ride, fly fishing, biking, hiking. Well, Annie Oakley we are not, but Barbara's pretty close to it. Barbara and her husband now own Triple Creek Guest Ranch in Montana, as Steve mentioned. And even this country resort gets top honors. A leading publication has ranked it the number one hotel in the world. We're all coming. <laughs> now, I just want you to know that the table here, who are supporting you, have the president of Host Hotels and Resorts. So this is not a host hotel's property. This could be a problem. <laughs> but it might become one. <laughs> um, CED has urged its members to practice what it calls business statesmanship. To understand just what that means, we need to look no further. I'm pleased to introduce to you a prime example. This year's recipient of the Leadership in Public Interest Award, the Honorable Barbara Barrett and my friend. Please welcome our honoree.
Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Anne. Now there's a friend. Isn't that just great? It's wonderful to have a leader such as Anne McLaughlin here to do such an introduction. Thank you. What a sweetheart, yeah, really. Well, I want to thank each of you for being here on this very special occasion. This spring policy conference is uh, great in all regards, but to be a part of it is really something very special to me. You know, looking at the past recipients, it's clear that uh, this has been a well thought in the past uh, recognition, and I'm especially honored to have the chance to receive the leadership in the nation's interest recognition. Thanks, it is endlessly meaningful to me to have that kind of uh, statement made because it matters so much. Business statesmanship, some would think, is a lost art. I think it's something that has been perfected in a few settings and that we need to advance more. We need to recognize the leadership that is in the public interest and that a business leader has an obligation far beyond the corporate walls, but through the whole community and the society as, at large. And that's something that this organization advances, and not all uh, seem to recognize that, that importance. So this is really a very important uh, occasion and really something that is uh, meaningful to our nation, a nation based on the principles of business statesmanship and free enterprise. Now, we get beat up a little bit these days on the topic of free enterprise, but it's so vitally important. And there's so much that is happening because of that great system, a system that seems to be called into question on occasion, and that we don't spend nearly enough time learning about. And in too many places, in school, civics and free enterprise aren't taught anymore. It's important for us to get back to those things so that these basic core values that have made America strong and great in the past can continue into the future. You know, one of the big topics in today's world is infrastructure. And when we think about infrastructure, we often are talking about the roads, the potholes, the water and power and things like that. But allow me to be a spokesperson just for a moment for the topic of that invisible yet ubiquitous infrastructural item called space. We don't see it, so we often don't recognize it. But in our lives, most people don't make it to breakfast before space technology has an impact on your lives. We can't pump gas. We can't look at our uh, cell phones for communication, for navigation, for imagery, and for just about every part of our lives, that infrastructural item is vitally important, but it isn't so very obvious, and therefore seems often not to be included when we talk about infrastructure. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say that aviation, aerospace, and especially space assets are vital to our lives today, and they are increasingly contested and congested and competitive. And so the need for reliable space assets is something that has often forgotten, but which is uh, important to us in every count. So my opportunity to take this stage, we'll have a chance, I guess, to talk in a, in a moment, but uh, right now, between here and dinner, I'd like to just say thank you so very much for the extraordinary privilege of receiving this award, and I hope that you'll keep in mind the urgency and the importance of space in our lives every day. Thank you so very much. Enjoy. <laughs>